Hello Yarn Lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Sunday, June the 5th, 2022, and this is video number 147. How are you all doing? I hope you're well. It's been a while since I updated you on my makes and what I've been doing in the craft room and this community. So I thought I'd jump in here real quick to explain what's been going on. We have been so super busy over the last couple of weekends, Monday to Friday being work week, and then the weekends where we cram in a lot of things. We've had house guests, we've gone to the cabin, we've done some uh, gardening and all that sort of wonderful stuff. So I'm gonna put all of that towards the end of the video and jump straight into the yarn stuff. That's all what we're here for. So I want to say thank you for returning to my returning viewers and also anyone who is new. I want to welcome you as well. I set this channel up to talk about all of my yarning adventures. That's in knit crochet. I dabble in a little bit of hand dyeing of yarn, but I haven't done that for a while. And I talk about my acquisitions. What I thought of, of doing is because I've got lots of things to catch you up on that I've purchased, some happy mail, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to break this debt into two different videos and this one will be just particularly makes and catching you up on what I've been up to in my community. So uh, yeah, let's jump into what I have finished over the course of the little while that we haven't spoken to each other. Now, this is a labor of love of mine and you've been with me all the way when I've been working on this, so I want to just tell you it is finished. I had so much fun and look, I love this piece so much. It is Stephen West's pattern called Exploration Station and it is a knitted shawl. Oh my, I was amazed when it came off the needles. I didn't measure it, how big it was. But after washing and soaking it and then block, blocking it, pinning it down and getting the best chevron shape that I could at the edge, I am now at five, oh, it's my wingspan and I'm five foot eight and the depth of it is probably two and a half feet. And that's the way I kind of like my shawls or my scarves is that they're actually wider so that you can wrap them around and and shallower so they don't bunch up as much and they sit better on my body for some reason and maybe you have the same kind of uh, thoughts about your wraps and your scarves too this one is in a semicircle and those are the chevrons down there at the base i'm just amazed at how sheer this is too it's so light it uses four colors i'll get into that but let's try this on. I want to show you how it hangs when I put it on around me. It does have that rock and roll kind of flair to it. I won't fuss too much because there's a lot of things that I've got to get through but it's so beautiful and squishy and light drapey. I love it a lot. So nice. So yeah, I asked in my last podcast what kind of famous painting you thought of when you saw all the contouring lines and all the movement within the such an animated piece uh, and I got some great responses and there's no wrong or right answer it is all subjective I thought of Starry Nights but I got some feedback from people who saw Munch's painting called The Scream uh, Surratt's painting I think it's called Bathers by the shoreline or something where it's all stipple and pointillism and the people are like vapors in the air and this is what uh i see all of that in here with all the crazy flowy lines and amazing rock and roll feel to it so i absolutely enjoyed this each of the later part of the sections were quite a long stretch of knitting so if you are inclined to get bored after knitting say 400 stitches in one row then maybe, perhaps maybe this isn't the pattern for you but um the start of it knits up really super quick 
and then towards the end when it, the numbers of stitches get more and more it gets more and more of a methodical process of repetition so I did have to uh, come away from the television to work on the counting and uh, if you are like me sometimes stitch markers do help when you have a certain set of repeats just to get an idea of where things fall so I would suggest maybe clipping in some stitch markers on those repeats if you want to kind of like have a more easy knit and no not much counting a uh, few things that I learned in this were the cast on method was in a iCloud and Stephen West has a pattern, uh, sorry, a tutorial, video tutorial on his YouTube channel. And I'll link that down below for help if you are getting started on this and um, perhaps maybe need some direct visual direction. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. I got my brioche kick in it. I also had some slip stitching technique, which I loved, some eyelets. It had just a variety of things that kept my interest going. Uh, the learn for me with uh, the brioche was increasing. I've done some inc decreasing before in brioche in a hat, but I have never done the increasing. I know that it's just the reverse, but because you never experience doing it with your hands and having the eye hand coordination, it's hard to, um, you know, envisage going backwards and doing the opposite to gain stitches. But uh, th for me, this was the first time that I did it. And I didn't do it perfectly. I had to rip back to the lifeline twice because I wasn't happy with the way that it was looking. I was misunderstanding the instructions. And then I finally did understand it and got I got to do it on like the third time the right way. So that was awesome. Uh, yet to learn how to pick up stitches in brioche. I know that there are some helpful tutorials out there and I have to build up my confidence in what to do with the picking up. Now I did do some successfully, but I don't know what I did to do that successfully. And others, I I had to, you know, just sort of like pull back to the safety line or the lifeline to start again. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the yarn that I used and also the pattern where you can get it. Since uh, I have this publication in my library, I purchased this uh, it has around 14 Stephen West knitted shawls and it's called West, Knit, West Knits Best Knits Volume 1 Shawls. And I purchased this publication from a British Columbia store and they sent it to me and it was very inexpensive if I can recall where that store was and hopefully they still have some in stock if you're in the area. Um, that might be a choice for you to find this publication. It features Stephen West with the Exploration uh, Station shawl on the front and he chooses some wonderful colorways in here. You'll see a different a variety of colors in the same pattern. Really lovely. And it calls for a, you, oh sorry, you can also buy the pattern separately on Ravelry and I'll include that down below so if you just want the Exploration Station you don't have to buy the full publication. Uh, as with all of the knits uh, patterns within this publication you can actually get them separately as well. So the pattern called for a four millimeter set of knitting needles. I use my Chagu set and the the cord needed to be no less than 40 inches in uh, length because of the number of stitches towards the end of the end of the shawl and uh, anything smaller would have been too cumbersome stitches probably would have fallen off if they were bunched up too tight so I didn't have that 40 inch cable and I had purchased the set of Chagu stainless steel interchangeables in the small cable variety so I could have Put them all together to make 40 inches but uh, I didn't want to do that because it would have uh, not freed up the cables for other projects that I was working on so I went to an uh, online store called True North Yarn Co and I purchased some yarn and wanted to try out the store and that's where I found my 
uh, cable that length, 40 inches, and now it sits in my collection. And I have the 40 inch cable for other large shawls and other large projects. It was around 13 Canadian dollars for the interchangeable cable. Um, it shipped really quickly. I think in two weeks I got it and I believe their store is located in Ontario or Nova Scotia. It's one of those two, somewhere back east. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the yarn. I housed my project in my saddlebag. I don't know whether that's officially the name of the style of bag, but I call it my saddlebag. And it's from Jezebel B. She's an Etsy crafter. She um, She's a crafter that has an Etsy store online. And there is her label. I love this bag so much. So color one is this yarn here. I've used this as the high contrast color and it's great for the contouring of the shapes. And it is a yarn dyer from around these parts and it's called Sweater Maker Yarns. Doesn't have a colorway name or number, but it's in this ultramarine blue, very dark, rich blue, really nice. Color two was generously gifted to me by a YouTuber here. Her name is Kerry Penny and she is from the Happy Crafty Homemaker. And this is from Queen City Yarns. It is in the colorway King Neptune. Lovely speckly style yarn there. My color three is a Knit Picks yarn and it's called the Hawthorne series. The colorway is called Spring Water. All of these yarns are fingering weight. Okay, and my fourth colorway, it rolled off, uh, is, I'm gonna have to show you the label because I don't have the skills to pronounce this yarn. Is this color here? And this one here is uh, just super 100% superwash merino and the colorway is called Dancing Machine. Really nice variegated there between uh, like a scarlet red and almost like a purpley blue color. I like those. Okay, so that is this beautiful, beautiful shawl. Anyway, I'll take it off because it is getting quite warm in the room. Last look of it. Absolutely love it. I'm just amazed how sheer it is. Okay, next finished work that I have to show you came off my needles yesterday. So quite a new finish. Here it is here. It's a second make that I've made to pattern that I had written up in my notebook. It is a cable sweater vest. It's very, very squishy. And as you can see, there's one thing that happened along the way, which I wasn't intending to have, and it was a different dye lot in the skeins of yarn that I use. So yes, you've seen it here. It's quite faded, and I guess it was a different dye lot so I've got a, a deeper base, a faded middle, and then again, it goes back to the deeper base. Uh, sorry, the, the top part's deeper in color as well. So an unfortunate thing, but the most fortunate thing was where it landed. It actually is just before, cause I knitted this from bottom to the top. And just before I split for the panels, like the sleeves and doing the back and the front panel separately, I had finished the ball. So it does go right around the whole piece and it creates its own design feature. That's what I'm calling it. A mistake, but a design mistake. And <laughs> I really love it. It's so squishy. I love the accent color that I used here for banding the, uh, the ribbing sections for the neck, the arms and the, uh, the waistband. 
and it's around a 44 inch circumference. Uh, right now it's probably a 42, but because it hasn't relaxed yet and it needs to open up, there's probably a good two inches of positive ease yet to come out of this garment. I haven't washed it or blocked it yet, but uh, once it's worn and once it's actually loosened up a little bit and relaxed, it will gain those two extra inches because when I wear it, it actually opens up all the cables and I'm a, I'm a 42 to 43 inch chest and it slightly opens up for me, but it can actually open up a lot more. Um, yeah, so the cables run around all the way uh, around the, the piece and yeah, I will talk to you about the needles that I used as well as the yarn. So I gathered the yarn together that I used in the sweater vest, the cable sweater vest. And for the main color, I held two yarns together. The first one being Knit Picks Brava Sport in the colorway Heather Camel. Really nice brown there, neutral. It has a shimmer to it. It's 100% premium acrylic. And I used around four of these balls. It's 100 grams in each of the balls and 273 yards per ball. So I'm not too sure how much that is, but you can do the math. I held together with this yarn here. It is the fluffy yarn from Drops called Brushed Alpaca Silk. And the color is called Rust. This was the culprit. <laughs> I had um, used three or four balls. Actually, this is my fourth ball. So I used three and three quarters of a ball. And I believe my second or third ball was the culprit that had a different dye lot and uh, created a little lighter wash of a band of color across the the tube that I was building for the for the body part of the garment. So yeah. Really nice color, super, super soft. And for the key colors, like the accent colors around the neck, shoulders, and the waistband, I used these two held together. And this yarn here is one of the most delightful yarns that I've ever used. It is 100% baby alpaca and it's wonderfully soft. Okay, the beige colored one comes from Puna by Maneo. And that is again, 100% alpaca. I probably used around 20 grams of this color to make the bands. And the colorway is 4001. I held this together with this one. I don't have the ball band for this anymore because it has been from my stash. Bit. All of this yarn is from my stash and whatever was gifted to me. Um, so I grabbed it, this one, because I liked the dye over dye that I did on it. It was originally a be beige color and it's from Kartopu. From memory, it is called Natural Angora or Angora Natural. These two are both uh, also sport weight yarns and I over dyed it with red and black. So it created this kind of grayish, warm gray, almost like a liver color, if you can call it, like a, a grayish flesh tint. And yeah, those two together created the accent stripes. I don't know what's happening with my light right now. It's sort of, I guess the, the sun's going across the, the room. For my needles, what I used was a 5.5 set of metal needles that I got from uh, Prism. I think it's a German company, spelt P-R-Y-S-M. And the cables were quite stiff, but I got the job done with using, with using that. And I did use some Michaels loops and threads for my 4.5 millimeters for the banding uh, of the arms, the v-neck, and also the waistband. So I used whatever I had. 
in uh, my little toolkit and it worked out fine. So again, I'll show you the finished item and I also have a montage of working this up from the bottom up and I posted them probably over the course of the last three weeks on Instagram. So I'll find them and I'll put a little photo montage of this one's life as it evolved. Next up are the socks that I finished for my hubby Chad and you saw them in the last episode that I showed my works in progress and I had finished one of the socks but I was up to the second sock I think I can't remember but they're all done and I've washed them and blocked them and they are so comfortable because I don't have sock blockers I don't think he minds if I just show you with them on my feet but I've got one in one foot and I can show you the other so here it is here can you see it so yeah they turned out super comfy and here's the other one here it's uh looking a little flat because I don't have the blocker to put it on but these were generously gifted to me as kits and they came all the way from Melinda who's over in Ontario hi Melinda they were cranked out sock tubes with uh, with no like contrasting heel toes or cuffs on them and they were, they were 60 stitches in circumference so six, 60 stitches around and they were in croy sock in the colorway desert colors really nice oranges and I think Chad will really like them because orange is his favorite color and then I just chose a uh, small skein of yarn that I had in my stash to uh, put in as the heels, toes and cuffs. And it was in this nice heathered grey colour. I have the ball band here as well somewhere. Actually, here's some of it left over. It's called Drops Fable Unicolour. And I'm showing you that upside down. There we go get the glare off of that super nice yarn it has a combination of uh, I think wool and polyamide yep 75 wool 25 polyamide really nice and I had done a pair of socks again in the same package that uh, Melinda had sent me there was a green pair of socks in a different colorway I don't have the ball band anymore but I did the uh, heels toes and cuffs as well in the same collection of yarn from drops but in a different colorway and I wanted to show you these have just come out of the laundry clean and I wanted to show you after six months of wear and washing what the yarn held up like so a little bit of peeling the structure held up nicely and there's no real wearing down right at this point uh, of the fabric at all and I use them a lot when I'm walking on my hikes so it is quite a durable yarn I would say for heels toes and cuffs yeah so thank you Melinda for that another finished pair of socks now I do want to talk to you about uh, dilemma I had with the sock and I know that a lot of people like making socks so maybe you can give me a tip because I was enjoying it right to the end I was doing the afterthought heel I enjoyed the cutting of the um, putting the safety line cutting the yarn collecting the stitches but the very last thing that I needed to do with the heel was turn the sock inside out to do my three needle bind off and have a nice kind of seamless looking I guess heel on the right side when I turned it back in in the right way but when I had done the turning of the inside out 
I had issues with dropping the stitches because I only had a small window of a circle about that big to try and fendangle the, the double pointed needles through when I was turning the sock inside out and I tried, I had to pick up stitches because they all fell off the stitches, uh, off the double pointed needles and I started like losing the rows. They kept, they kept on fraying. So I had to re-knit. The only way that I could figure out how to do it was to put those 16 stitches. So a set of eight and a set of eight that were going to pair up in the end. I had to put them on uh, stitch markers with a clasp and then have it so that when I turned it inside out, that each of the stitch markers had to come out separately from that small window. Uh, that was the only way that I could get to turn the sock inside out without losing the stitches. And then I had to carefully re-thread uh, the stitches off of the stitch markers and onto double pointed needles once they were turned inside out. But is there another way? I tried it with a cable, that didn't work because all of the stitches crossed over each other and it made it very hard for me to figure out which one was which. Um, <laughs> So the only way that I could do it was the stitch marker, but there might be another method that I'm not aware of. So I'd love to hear that from within the comment section down below, if you've had the same problem and what you've done to fix the problem. Next up is my finished objects that I am putting into a year long make along that I've joined and I've fallen way behind. So I've, need to catch up on several months. It is to Setter's Calendar Cow 2022. Now, if you don't know who Setter is, she is a YouTuber who has great content and she brings out these calendars every year and they celebrate certain things like you get inspired by photographs for each of the months that she presents on her channel. I'll link her channel down below uh, to where she talks about the Calendar Cow and for the months that I am including into this uh, video here. So I'm going to start with March. Can you believe this is how back I am? And the month of March was uh, celebrating the YouTuber I, uh, Knitting I Love and it was housed in my quilted project bag here that I took when we went camping and to the cabin I should say and we were doing some uh, cleaning up around the garden I did some crocheting and I had it in this quilted bag that was handmade by Melinda. So thank you, Melinda. I love my project bag. And I was working to a pattern. I'm not sure whether this is paid for or free, but I'll link it down below. It is called the Azalea Offset Shell Cowl by Darlene R. Joyce. And I don't have a color printer, but this is what it should look like. And I completed it. Here it is here. Now the photo that is, uh, was supplied by Knitting I Love was a field of rolling green hills in Ireland. And the maker is sitting in the foreground of the photograph and she has this amazing beanie which ripples through different colors but i was inspired to do this cross shell offset shell design because it reminded me of a celtic kind of knot in some weird way and i thought this kind of reminds me of something that would be in ireland and the color green uh reminds me of those fields so here it is here it's in a tube. The seam is, it's worked up in a flat panel and then you just seam it together. So there is a seam line on the inside and on the outside it's kind of, you see a little bit of it. I changed it up a little bit because I wanted to have a starting, uh, what is that called? It is double slip through the back loop, double slip stitch through the back loop, and it creates a knit, a faux knit stitch. And I did that for the top and the bottom of the 
of the piece and I'll just show you what it looks like when I'm wearing it. There we go. I like it. I think it's got great texture and the yarn that I use and the hook size that I use are in this bag as well. So I have the Susan Bates hook size that I used was a, I can't even read that, a five millimeter. And this is the yarn that I used. It's called Sirdar Dapple in double knitting. So it's a three weight yarn. And the colorway or shade is called Enchanted Forest. Shade number 0083. I really like it. So that was my March entry. Here's another look at it and I'm showing you the seam side. There we go. Has that nice rustic feel as well, which I really love. The next one that I have is April and April's month was Deb over at the Canadian Crotcheter. Hi Deb. And she is sitting on her deck, a cabin in the woods and the leaves are turning yellow. So it's like an autumny shot. And it's not, I uh, said, said in the beginning of her putting the colors together, it wasn't seasonal based. So she wasn't pairing pictures that were seasonal based with the months. But um, this photograph inspired a scarf. Here it is here. It's finished. I think uh, when I showed it last time, I was probably four feet into it. And now it is six feet long yeah probably just a little shy of six feet long so I put another almost two feet onto it onto the work and I just turned it inside out and sewed the inside of the of the tube that I knitted up and this one here I got a bit fancy and I did a, a kitchener stitch so it looks like the stitches go right around. Yeah, so I uh, I love it. I think it it captures the colors of the of the paint on the shed as well as the deck panels of wood and the leaves. And Deb has a awesome red sweater that sweater that she crocheted up and it's kind of like not entirely this color but it's more of an orangey red. This is more raspberry red, but I don't, I don't mind. Don't tell. It's fine. <laughs> and I also did the hat. And I used up every bit of the color striping yarn and I had to, uh, I had to complement the yarn with another yarn because I wasn't going to have enough for a six foot scarf as well as a hat. So what I did was I striped in the, uh, this, it's called butternut. So I had then enough to do a six foot scarf and a hat set that will be donated and sent in in September to Rose Likes Crochet, who is collecting hats and scarves or hats and cow sets. And uh, in September for Wings, which is a, organization that helps people who have suffered from domestic violence and sometimes they come away from their situation with nothing and so I think these items would help. I'm also creating some some uh, donation packs for my area which has a house that does something very similar to Wings and I'll talk about that in another video that's coming up. I'm just building up some more inventory to send in for donations for that one. But this is my first set that I'll be sending in to Rose in September. Okay, the two yarns that I used to make up that set, the hat and scarf set that uh, I'm sending in to Rose, was Hirschner's Worsted Stripes in the colorway Morocco. And that is a full worsted weight. It also was an eight ounce or half a pound of yarn, 
which gives me or gave me 488 yards or 448 meters. So quite a number uh, of yardage and meterage for that ball. And I paired it so that I could get the stretch it to a longer length of uh, what I needed with the Stitch Studio by Nicole and it's the Earth Tone series. This one was called Butternut. So it was that flecky yellowish color. That is all of my finished makes. I have also a work in progress to share with you. So I'll grab that now. I only have one because I'll talk to you a little bit about why I only have one to show right now. This is Bag O' Days crystals pattern called the Easy Crocheted Shawl. I will link the pattern down below. She has a tutorial on it and also her Etsy store where you can purchase this pattern. I had it on my little thumb drive that I purchased, uh, I think it was like a year ago and she had 600 or 700 patterns on the thumb drive and now she's almost at a thousand patterns. So I'm cheering you on, Crystal, you can do it. I absolutely love this one here. I love the weathered quality in the colorway and I'm using a really big hook, a six millimeter and I love the fabric it's making up. Really nice. I love it. Love it so much. Uh, the yarn that I'm using is a combination of two yarns that I'm holding together. And these are the two here. That's how much I have left. I probably have enough to do maybe another four or five more rows uh, before I do Pico or maybe four rows and Pico. I'm kind of playing yarn chicken a little bit because I don't know when to start the Pico, but <laughs> I think from what I'm discovering with the colors right now, I can get away with, as it changes through to the different colors, I get away with maybe about five rows, six rows, and it's just starting on the yellow. Uh, so the yellow, color that I was holding is a gradation between teal and it runs through to green and now it's going into the yellowish green color that is called it's a wrap sprinkles and those are the type of yarns that have four different threads running through them it is considered a two weight yarn and I'm pairing it with yarn bees rainbow rhapsody ivy leg that's the colorway Ivy League. And this is a classified, I think, a, oh, it's a one weight. This is saying it's one weight. And oh, this is a one weight too. So they're two one weights. I did make a fluff on that one. And so they kind of work out to be a uh, heavier sport weight, like a two weight yarn. And I'm really liking how they're blending and, you know, mowling together. It gives it more of a weathered look. The reason why I have yarn be yarn was that I was uh, gifted uh, some yarn. Actually, it was um, someone went shopping for me and it was Kit from All Things uh, Crochet and Knit with Kit. And she asked me whether I wanted anything from Hobby Lobby sale. I think it was last year. So I said, yes, go crazy. Just, you know, send me the bill. And uh, so that was how I got the Rhapsody um hobby lobby yambi i absolutely like it it's super soft yeah so that is my one and only work in progress that i've got to share with you now i've got to catch you up on some news and it's quite exciting news again i was uh approached i kind of answered a call to an email from hobie and Hobie was putting out the feelers to see who in the, uh, I guess the creative field wanted to try out some new yarn. And I put my hand up for that. So the yarn has arrived and it came in two batches. So <laughs> I got the first batch maybe a week ago and then the second batch just came on Friday. So two days ago. 
and I've just done my first uh, video of the opening of the yarn and talking about it initially. So June will be a month where I'll be reviewing some of the yarn that Hobie sent. I keep looking over there because the bag of yarn is just sitting beside me. And uh, so yeah, I'm excited about that. There's some new yarns in there, some yarns that I uh, requested to pair with the new yarns that they were delightfully uh, gifting me as well in this uh, to review and help me work through my vision, my ideas that I had with the new yarn. And yeah, there's some other yarns in there that I asked whether I could try out and they were so generous. They said, yes, we'll, we'd love to get your review and your point of view on the yarn. So um, that's going to be a big project and I'll be working on that too. I just started videoing and tonight I'm going to be working on my first uh, yarn that I will be reviewing. So yeah, I hope you'll enjoy me in that exciting time. Over the course of June, I probably will drop the video sometime late June, maybe early July. Okay, now is the time where I talk to you about what's been going on in my community, where me and my husband Chad have moved into. There's been quite some activity because I have not recorded a video over the weekends that have passed, but weekend, sometime three weekends ago, we went to a crafting fair, which was located on a property that was a private property with beautiful gardens that we walked through and it was called Woodlands Festival and we met a lot of crafters that were wood carvers or potters which is another love of mine in my life and we saw some fiber artists as well there were maybe two places where they were selling their wares like scrubbies and beanies and shawls all wonderful work I uh, didn't see any like sellable fiber like in Hanks ready to use. I've got some footage for you and I'd like to share with the, with you the footage right now and be back to you, talk to you about other things that have been going on. The next thing that we got up to was we had a weekend at the cabin where we helped Chad's parents do a little bit of gardening, prepping the area for uh, collecting all of the dry wood and leaves that were around after lots of storms that hit through the area and the trees and the leaves were just sort of piling up. So just as a hazard, clearing that all away. And that was uh, one of the weekends where I enjoyed some crochet and just love being by the lake. It's amazing. So that's why I didn't film as well. The following week, which was last weekend, we had some guests come from Vancouver and they stayed with us Saturday and Saturday night. And we did some hiking on Sunday, which was lovely. We took them to Nymp Falls, which was one of the falls that I've already detailed and showed on the video. So I, uh, yeah, didn't take any footage. I just enjoyed their company and it was so good to see them. I started pickleball. I don't know whether you have heard of this. It's kind of like a new sport that's been going on. And it's like, it's almost like uh, in a, a sort of a miniature scale of tennis. And the, the rackets are like almost like paddles. So you could imagine them being something more of a table tennis paddle, but different shape. And the ball that is used in the game is a plastic ball with lots of aerated holes. So you don't have to hit it very hard and it pretty much uh, sails through the air quite nicely. Um, so yeah, uh, I learned some of the rules of the game and it was my second time going to play. So the first time was an open door uh, court that was lovely. It was one of the hot days that we had, very far and few between. And then the second game that I had was just today, this morning, was indoors because it's been raining. Uh, we wanted to try pickleball, so we were in a gymnasium and uh, set up the court. 
and they have the court um, lines already painted in, in amongst all the lines for basketball and all the other things like volleyball and badminton. So we had um, our courts already designated and we just needed to set up the, tent, uh, the, the net. So I really enjoyed that. If you ever are looking for something that's low impact, if you've got bad knees, or if you just need to, you know, move around a bit, it's kind of a nice sport. The other thing that I have in my notebook is to tell you what's happening in July for me, which is next month coming up so quickly. So I'm going on a vacation and this is the vacation that I'm calling the redo three times over. So the first time it failed, then we booked for the second time that failed, third time we booked that failed, and now this is the redo the, the third time to um, go away. The first time was because of COVID, also the second time was because of COVID. Anyway, so we are going through the process of doing all of the testing before uh, international flights and then the testing before getting on the cruise. So we're going on a cruise that will go around the Caribbean and I will be going down to the States to uh, board my ship and Orlando will be the hub where we're going to spend a couple of days and then we'll board the ship for a week and I'm really looking forward to it. This is my 50th birthday present that was meant to happen in 2020 and I am now 52 <laughs> and all the credits that we had paid for this trip were parked into accounts for us in the various organizations and companies that we had given our money over to so they were holding it for us and then every time we tried to rebook and it happened that we had to pay a bit more money uh, and then again, a bit more money each time we, we uh, advanced and rebooked. So I think the cruise, I don't even want to think about how much it is costing us, but we're going to stick to our guns and we're departing and we'll see it through. We'll get to go on our trip. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. And then the end of July, will see my mum fly all the way from Australia and her husband, Robert, and they will be both coming to stay with us here. And I'm really looking forward to it because I haven't seen my mum and her husband for uh, three years, but we do Skype every two weeks. Um, she was funny in the last Skype date that we had. She was chatting to me saying like, I bought some yarn for you and it's going into the suitcase. Uh, so she showed me and she was really excited about it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that does look like nice yarn. So I can't wait for her to come. And the yarn is just like an added bonus, but she's really the, the treasure that I want to see. And lastly, what I want to catch you up on is what I've been watching. So I'm going to make some suggestions, some recommendations. Maybe you've seen some of these things and want to add uh, your comments and feelings towards the shows. But uh, these are mostly on Netflix. I think they all might be. So I watched Stranger Things season four, part A. I've got one more episode to go. So they're gonna wrap up, wrap up season A, uh, sorry, season four A, and then they're waiting a little while and then they're releasing season four B. So uh, I got a feeling a cliffhanger is gonna to happen tonight and then they're just gonna make us wait for that. The second thing that I've got written down here is Anatomy of a Scandal. Now this is a mini series that's done and dusted over I think six episodes and it is quite an interesting storyline about uh, perception of uh, consent and how it plays out uh, as a victim as well as a person going through life believing a certain thing. So it's all about people's realities and truths and how they differ of what happened in a certain situation. So I really liked it from that point of view. The human interaction is good. The dialogue's excellent. Uh, it is British and British people, I don't know, just know how to 
wordsmith things and make it very interesting. Uh, the other thing that I finished watching was Ozark and that is now a completed done and dusted series and I was floored at the end. I was a little disappointed uh, to say the least about how characters didn't come through in the end on how I thought they would end up but um, yeah it's like I don't want to give too much away but <laughs> I was just a little let down on how I'm a real optimist when it comes to like closure or storylines but I was really kind of like yeah it was a pessimistic look at uh, how things can end up. So yeah, those are some suggestions. I hope that you'll enjoy them. If you choose to watch them, let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are. And with that, I will bid thee farewell and I will go ahead and do another video as my light is failing. I started recording at around six o'clock maybe and with all of the stops and starts that I've had now it's like 7 30. So an hour and a half has transpired and I have to go down and get dinner. So I will see you in the next video. See you then. Have a great time. Bye.